Hey fam, I'm here with a really quick word for you. I'm going to pray and then I am going to jump into what I'm going to say. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity once more. Father, I humble myself before you in your presence and I ask you to help me to release and relay this the way you need it to be. I pray you would encourage somebody, Father God, I pray that you would open up the spiritual eyes and ears and the hearts of your sons and daughters who watch this, Father, and that, you know, that it would just be confirmation for them, Lord God, that it would speak to their spirit the way you need it to. I pray against every hindering and blocking spirit right now, Father, every attack of the enemy on one of your, every one of your sons and, or daughters, Lord God, that has been planned and premeditated, Lord God, cancel it now, right now, in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of distraction, Lord God, every attack of distraction, be canceled in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, I pray, amen. Listen, y'all, I have uh, something to say. So basically, let me tell y'all what happened. I had just finished preparing another word for you all that I'm going to be releasing um, soon, probably tomorrow. Well, I had just finished preparing it with the Lord. And usually when I do that, I just continue, I just like, you know, worship and just, you know, thanking the Lord for, you know, giving me the revelation and um, just being with me in that moment to help me to prepare what he wanted me to prefer, prepare for you all. I was just worshiping. And as I was worshiping, you know, I don't know if I to I've told you, I've mentioned it a couple of times how the Lord has been, you know, just telling me to start looking for places, start looking for places to move, physically move. Um, he's been telling me this for a while. And um, so anyway, so as I'm sitting there and I'm worshiping, it's like all of a sudden the thought of looking for apartments popped up in my head. So I thought, honestly, I thought it was just me. Um, you know, those those ones where you kind of kind of think that it's either like a distracting thought or it's just you and it's just your mind. So I thought it was just my mind thinking that. So I kind of just not. I don't want to say ignored it, but I kind of just like disregarded it. And I was like, just continued worshiping like the way I was and worshiping. And then two seconds later, I mean, the thing comes back, the thought comes back in my head again. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, the Lord must want me to um, do be, do that when I'm finished. So I'm like, okay. I, I stopped for one second. I went into my laptop and because I had my laptop with me and I just typed I just like, you know, um, pulled it up, pulled up like one of the things that you go on to look for apartments. I just pulled it up and left it so that I don't forget to do it when I finish um, spending time with the Lord. So then I finished spending time with the Lord. Uh, no, I didn't actually at this moment. I did not. Um, I went back into um, continuing my worship and continuing to spend time with the Lord. So in that instance, then... Um, the Lord was still on the topic of apartments. And I'm just like, okay, God, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I want to worship with you. I want to spend time with you. You're talking to me about apartments. Like why? Not why, but like, I was kind of just like, okay, you're, you're bringing this back into my mind. So anyway, when he brought the thought back into my mind, it's like he kind of uh, was speaking to me or used it as a segue to kind of speak to me. I feel the Holy Spirit. Okay. He kind of used it as a segue to speak because we're getting to his part now of the story <laughs> he kind of used it as a segue to speak to me and so when he um was speaking to my spirit he was sort of reminding me of something that he had reminded me of today this morning um and i was just while i was talking to him actually and i was talking to him and i said uh, like i had said something like Lord, I don't know how I'm going to be, uh, and I know this is a lot how a lot of us of us feel sometimes. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to be affording a, a, a new a, a apartment and to be living in my I don't know how I'm going to afford it because like my, like I'm not there yet, <laughs> right? So that's thought came into my head. Then immediately, it's like the Holy Spirit spoke and said, I didn't tell you to look at the price tag. If I'm your father and I'm telling you look for an apartment, I didn't say look for the amount or the price of the apartment. I told you to look for the apartment, to look for somewhere to move because I'm going to move you. So I need you to look for somewhere to move in a specific area where he told me a location. I need you to look for somewhere in this area, right? And I, and I, and this is for somebody. I know I, I, the Lord wanted me to release this to you, to my family, my brothers and sisters, because this is what God is speaking and wants us to understand for this hour, for this moment where we are at, right? Um, he wants to be, he wants you to understand that this is where your mindset, the mindset should be, right? He didn't tell me to look at the price tag. He didn't tell you 
to look at the price tag because I'm looking and I'm just like, I'm looking at the permits. I'm looking at the prices. Like, honestly, to be real with you, I was Googling like cheap apartments or cheap rent or cheap apartments with cheap rent or whatever. That's what I was looking for. Well, we know, we well know. And that's sometimes what we always do, even in just life, right? Because we don't, sometimes we should be looking for the best for ourselves and we don't. And God wants the best for us. And he wants the best for you. If he told you to look for a house that is seemingly outside of your price bracket, you still got to look. It doesn't matter. Don't look. He didn't say to look at the price tag. Uh, not for what God is about to be doing. You don't need to be looking. Don't, don't look, don't, don't. Don't look at the price tag. And I know it's so, this sounds crazy and this sounds out of this world and I'm, it sounds like I'm not being realistic. And But for those of you who know God and know who God is and know how God works, you know that God works well with things that look impossible. And so anyway, continuing with what was happening and happening in the moment when I, when I was uh, with the Lord, he was like reminding me of this uh, and telling me, reminding me of that moment and saying like, to, when he was saying, I didn't tell you to look at the price tag, stop looking at the price tag, look for the actual permit. And it's so funny because I'm like, he, he kind of caught me in that moment because it's just like a temptation is to look for the most affordable, what you can afford, what's the most affordable. And that is the, that's the smart thing to do, right? That's what we do because we consider that to be wise, right? And it is wise. But basically what God, what God was telling me is he's not moving off of what we think is wise. He's not moving off of what we think makes sense um, or what we think is uh, logical. And so um, he was reminding me of that. And then there's a phrase that the Lord, while the Lord was, I think it came from a word that I um, had released. And it was a phrase that he had given me within the word that just stuck with me when I read it over again. And I had written it down on that board right there in big letters. You can't see it because the marker is kind of bright, but I had written it. I wrote it this morning when the Lord told me like to stop looking at the price tag. I wrote it on the board and it really, it's something I believe that he uh, gave as a gift uh, to look at every morning to be encouraged to say, and it's, um, it, it says, he said, move, just do and trust move just do and trust and that that is where god needs us to be and what god needs us to be moving in right now so anyway uh so yeah so i'm sitting on the bed um he's talking to me about this whole, whole apartment thing and stop looking at the price tag all that good stuff right and then he reminded me of that phrase um and i was like okay god i was like okay okay fine all right i'm gonna i'm like okay god i'm gonna i'm gonna do that i'm just gonna look at i said i'm just gonna be looking at the actual place itself to 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 because because i'm like the type of place i want I, like you know he wants me to because i in my mind i'm like okay well i'm trying in my mind yeah that's it go, uh, that's it that's it god i'm i'm settling in my mind i'm thinking about settling for something as opposed to choosing what god would want for me uh looking at what god would want for me you know and that just comes from living in a world and a society where settling is what's the norm you know what i'm saying uh settling for what you can afford settling for what makes logical sense um and that's what we're born into and that's what our our parents are uh born into and grow up thinking like in the mentality and stuff like that and so and then that's what we're brought into and that's how then that's how what we what we adapt to going through our life right you know, and so what it's like what God's trying to do is sort of get us out of that mindset because if we are supposed to go out into the world and operate in kingdom authority, but we are still thinking back here with the world and the way the world thinks, you know, it's you know, you have to understand the way the kingdom or the spirit works. You have to understand the way God's world works. God does not operate off of the way we operate. Okay, he doesn't. So anyway, yeah, back to what I was saying before. So yeah, so I was, so after all of that, and he had given me that at that phrase and stuff, and you know, I had said okay that I'm going to listen to his instruction. Um, he had to to just look at the for apartments. Um, I went back into worshiping, right? Went back into worshiping, and um, literally as soon as I went back into worship, I heard him say unlikely miracles either it was either it was unlikely miracles yeah I'm, i thought i heard unlikely blessings but it wasn't unlikely blessings it was unlikely miracles 
Now I heard this once and I was like getting, I was getting, you know, I was just, my spirit was just getting excited when he was telling me that because when he was telling me it, it was after he had started talking to me about this apartment thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, because unlikely miracles, I was like taking it as for myself. Cause I was like, oh my goodness. Cause I'm like, are you trying to say that, you know, he, like he said, to, he told me to do this thing and to look for the apartment and I look at the price tag and then saying unlikely blessings right after unlikely miracles, sorry, right after that. And I'm just like, Oh, I'm like, I, it's like, I'm trying to like, I read in between the lines, Lord. I see what you're trying to say to me. I get it. I, I hear you. I hear you. Right. Cool. Then after that, um, I continued worshiping and I was just praising God actually. And, and, you know, so happy to hear that. Cause it just really was something I needed to hear in that moment. And then what happened was I heard it again, unlikely miracles. He said it again, and I continued praising and worshiping. And then he said it a third time. And I'm like, and unlikely miracles. And then I said, okay, in that moment, I opened up my eyes. I'm like, I know that when the Lord repeats something to me like that, he wants me to write it down. And I know that when he repeats something to me like that, it's not just for me, but it's for you too. It's not just for me, but it's because he's telling me, I want you to go and share this with your brothers and sisters. I want you to tell them to expect the unexpected, but in the way that he he said it, not the way we normally hear it. He just said, unlikely miracles, tell them unlikely miracles, right? And so when I was writing it down, then the Lord had me replace the word. You remember that phrase I just told you about move, just do and trust. So this is specifically for a, a couple of few people. I don't know who you are. I, I really don't know who you are, but um, when he said this, uh, he was reiterating re to me to make sure that I say this because a couple of few of you need to hear this. This. And I pray that it's confirmation for you to do it. Um, because he said to me to remember when I was telling you the phrase that he gave me, move, just do and trust. So when I was writing, I was about to write move, just do and trust. The Lord had me said, write down, just apply and trust. So specifically speaking, there's a couple people who may be watching. I don't know. Um, a few, a couple, I don't know how many. Uh, and God is literally saying to you, just apply, apply for whatever it is. I don't know, an apartment, a job, apply for whatever alone. I don't know. He said, just apply and trust specifically speaking, whatever that means specifically for you. He said, just apply and trust. Um, 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 what else? What else, Lord? Now, the definition for unlikely is not likely to happen, be done, or be true. And then in little brackets, had to write, I had to write in world's reality, in the world's reality, right? In the world's reality, what is not likely to happen or be done or be true. And then the other words for similar words that it gave me for this word unlikely war, improbable, unexpected, uh, beyond belief. And when I, when I was reading this, I could not help but remember that scripture that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has it entered into the hearts of man. I had to look up the scripture on my phone because I couldn't help but remember the scripture that goes a little something like this. And this is from the Amplified, 1 Corinthians 2, from verse 9. But just as it is written in Scripture, things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man. Those unlikely things. It's very unlikely that water would turn into wine. Pretty unlikely. That just don't make sense. Who could turn water into wine except for the one who created the water? Who can very much alter the properties and all that scientific stuff of water, but the person who created the water? Uh, so things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, who obey him and who gratefully recognize the benefits that he has bestowed. This is the Amplified Version. For God has unveiled them and revealed them to us through this Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even sounding and measuring the profound depths of God. The Spirit searches all things, and even sounding and measuring the profound depths of God. So that means in order to be able to be able to even perceive that which is seemingly unlikely, you need to understand that it is by the Spirit of God that you can even be able to begin, start to, fathom because what did I say I was looking at the price tags of these things because realistically speaking in reality that's what makes sense that's what you do right 
But what God is saying is by his spirit, you should be able to move past those things and know who your father is and understand the father that you have and, and understand who it is that you serve and understand that God is God and that God can do the impossible and that God can move whatever he wants to move. God can move the hearts of men. God can move that apartment, the, 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 the landlord to approve you okay god can uh, god can move the heart of of the bank teller or the bank to approve you for a loan god can move whatever he wants to move when he wants to move it it's that unlikely thing that god's gonna bring this is the hour this is the hour and and this is the moment when you need to, you need to be able to perceive and believe what God is about to do. It's not crazy. I'm not crazy. You're not crazy. You heard God correctly. He wants you to do and trust. Do and trust. Do and trust. Do and trust. And God will take care of the rest. He will take care of the rest. God's trying to bring you into his reality for you and for your life. He's trying to bring you into his reality for you and for your life. That means his reality and God's reality does not make sense to the natural eye. It says, eyes have not seen. Natural eyes have not seen. Natural ears. Natural eyes have not seen. Natural ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the natural hearts of man. Eyes have not seen. That means your spiritual, uh, your sorry, your natural, and your natural eyes, your natural ears, you cannot they cannot perceive these things that God is saying that he wants to do, which then means that when you hear it, initially, your flesh doesn't believe it because it just sounds like nonsense or nonsensical, but it sounds like it just does not make sense. It's not logical. But when you have the spirit of God inside of you and you hear those words and you hear a word from God that he gives you, you should be able to perceive it and receive it. And hold on to it. And if he gives you an, instru an instruction like just apply, do and trust. You do whatever it is that God told you to do and trust. And this has been a, this is a theme that the Lord has had me on. Moving, oh, being obedient. Why? Because if I'm obedient, what happens? My obedience, sorry for the talking in the background, but my obedience is going to create the capacity, like the Lord said before, for the provision. My obedience creates the capacity. Uh, just like uh, when Jesus told the servants to get the jars, that's the capacity because Jesus was obedient and to what you know he knew what was his that was his moment to do what the lord had destined him for him to do so he was obedient and submitted to that and said he told them to get the jars that was the capacity that created capacity for the miracle for the water the provision to get poured in right for what was needed to be poured into that capacity right for the miracle to occur so it is your obedience that creates capacity for the miracle like i said the other day that is it it is your obedience that will create the provision unlikely miracles and that is why the obedience is required thank you holy spirit he needs your your obedience to what he's told you to your to the instructions that he's given you he needs your obedience because the fact that he's going to be doing performing these unlikely miracles he he actually wants to perform these things in our lives, but he needs your uh, faith, your obedience in faith. The Holy Spirit just said it so well. The reason why the obedience and the faith are two significant factors, the reason why those are two significant factors is because the obedience when you move 
God moves. When you move, God moves. If God hasn't moved yet, it is because you haven't moved yet. When you move on the instruction, God moves. When Jesus moved on what he needed to do on the instruction, God moved and turned that water into mundo. He turned that water into wine. When you move, God moves. And he needs you to move because the unlikely miracles come in your way. He needs you to move because he's about to perform an unlikely miracle in your life. So he needs your movement. He needs you to move on what he's told you to do. This is a theme, obedience in faith, because what God wants you to do is move and do and trust. Move and trust on my instructions, says the Lord. Move and trust and do. Because when you move, you're going to see what God does for you. When you move, you're going to see it. He needs you to move. Because some of you have been hemming and hawing and la la bo Some of you have been sitting and making, trying to decide whether or not you should apply for that, whatever it is. I'm not even going to just say apartment because there's other things that the Lord's told you to apply for. And so some of you, you know, have been really sitting and afraid to do it because you look at your bank account or you're looking at the situation, the current one. And listen, this this might sound cliche, um, but it's real. Um, this is literally what God is putting on my heart right now. Listen, some of you need to listen to what God just told you to do. I don't know what he just told you to do, but listen to what he just told you to do. Listen to what he just told you to do. And on the other side of your obedience, you'll see. You gonna see. Oh, you gonna see, child. You gonna see. Listen. Oh, I love when the sun shines like this because it's just like, I love it because it just, oh, hallelujah. Makes me feel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I wasn't expecting for this video to be even this long. But I love when God, I love when God moves the way he wants to move. See, when you invite God to move, he will move in your life. So thank you, Lord. So your obedience is you saying, God, you can move. God, you can move. You Not that God needs your permission or anything, but it's just to say that God needs your faith. Uh, you cannot please him without your faith. He cannot operate without your faith. Like being in a relationship with him is founded is, is founded on faith, upon your faith in him. So he needs that faith in order for you to be able to make it through to where he's trying to pull you into. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? That is it for Yama Shandaya Sitiri also. Move on your faith, no matter how small it is. Like the type of faith that God is going to need from you in this season is no nonsense faith. Come on. Hallelujah. No nonsense faith. None of the hemming and hawing and wondering if and how and why and all. No nonsense faith. Do it. Do what God is telling you to do. Do it. Do it. Do it. God is in the mood to perform for his kids. Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand? Do you understand? This is a theory. This is like for real, for reals. God is, is in the mood. God right now, these unlike because you know what, do you know what's gonna happen? Do you know what the unlikely miracles are going to do? It's not just for you. Your obedience or the outcome of your obedience is not just solely for the purpose of giving you what you want but it's for the purpose of showing God's glory in your life and through you and through your life because it is to bit and then it is to show people who God is to his sons and daughters and that's not to say that God is a genie and that's why people should follow God but that's to say that the children of God first of all are taken care of that God loves his children and when you give your testimony that gives somebody the 
that gives the attraction of some to, to somebody to say, this is who God is to you. Because I don't want you to think that God is somebody that is a genie because he ain't. But these miracles and what God does for you in your life, it's not solely for you. Your obedience affects de- uh, generations. Your obedience to God, just like when you chose to follow God and, and follow the path with the Lord and, and build with him, you literally your obedience has what's the word uh, what's the word lord your obedience has created that domino effect and in the spirit in your generation you severed the enemy off of your generation in your family and in the world you severed the enemy off what comes from you the children that you are going to bear you severed whatever the enemy had attached to you and your family and before you you severed that off when you're when you obeyed God's call. So understand the importance. Your obedience, it has a an effect, an after effect. I'm done. I love you all so much. I pray that this encouraged you. I pray that it gave you confirmation on whatever you need a confirmation on in the name of Jesus. And I pray that when you bring it to the Lord and you talk to the Lord about it, that he'll even give you even more confirmation, tell you more about how he needs you to obey or how he needs you to go about following the instruction. I love you. I'll see you soon.